All right, let's talk some Trey Lance. It's interesting. Uh, you know, I haven't read a lot about what he did. Uh, it wasn't like a perfect day, but I actually liked what I saw from him. Again, I think one issue that I've noticed with you know myself compared to the general football fan population is I tend to be a lot more lenient on rookie quarterbacks than others do. To me, it's all about does the good outweigh the bad, and I think that the good absolutely outweighed the bad with Trey Lance. Uh, so let's get into the film. Let's really talk about it. Okay, so how about let's start off with this one. Let's start off with that big, long play uh, where they you know basically got a free uh, 75 or I believe 77 yard touchdown. Uh, incredible play. Uh, this is actually really just a horrible coverage by the Seahawks, which I think most of us knew when we saw that in the broadcast footage. We, we suspected that, yeah, that's what happens once you can see everybody on the field. Uh, that is definitely what happens. So the way this works is it's, it's cover three zone. And typically what you want to do for number 23 for Seattle, he is the deep corner in charge of covering the bottom right hand corner of the screen. And with a wide receiver who's going to run sort of over the middle, then he's going to try and run over and take away that route. This is something a lot of teams do, especially since that route is a very dangerous route in the Shanahan scheme. They run a lot of play action, which gets linebackers out of position. So that over the middle of the field area can often get open. And either the safety has to come down and make the play or the corner has to run over. So you do that. You then have Debo Samuel, who's the number two receiver on this play, kind of getting to the flat a little bit, and there should be no corner there. Now, the nice thing for Seattle is that you have a safety in the flat right here, Jamal Adams. So he should be able to take away Debo Samuel, but it, you know, it might take him a minute to realize that. So that's kind of the, the value here. Watch how right when this play starts, um, Jamal Adams completely screws up. So I've circled him in white. Horrible job by him. Uh, just bad, uh, quite frankly. You're covering grass at this point. And this is something that drives me crazy. Don't cover grass. You got to cover your opponents. And he just, it's a bad play by him. To me, this play is on Jamal Adams. The corner's going in, taking away number 11. If you want to do that, that's what you're supposed to do. I mean, that's something you can do when an Adams takes away Samuel. Like, that's how this rotation should clearly work. The safety also. This is kind of making this a little bit worse. He's running over the middle to take away that first route, and they're just leaving Samuel completely uncovered. Again, not the safety's fault, but this is going to end up working out worse. To me, this is a Jamal Adams play, or maybe you could argue a corner should have noticed this and passed off uh, number 11, instead cover Debo Samuel. But, I mean, that's tough, and Adams has to be prepared for it, especially when there's only two guys on the field in that area, right? If there's a third guy then it's understandable, but there isn't. There's two guys, two defensive backs. One of you should have been able to focus on Debo Samuel. Instead, Samuel gets open, and Adams was trying to communicate, so he just he thought that the corner was going to pick up Samuel. He didn't, so that's what happens there. But to me, that's on Adams. Uh, so, you know, good job, I would say, by Trey Lance to read that play, to notice how open Samuel was and make the throw. Uh, you know, finding the open guy is a skill, so I think that Lance deserves some credit, but absolutely, that helped bolster his stats. So, you know, people are going to say, ah, you know, he, all he got was from a blown coverage. Well, no, there was actually a lot more value than just that one, but I wanted to talk about that play and just break down how it happened. I want to talk about something like this now, and just the way Lance impacts the running game. This is a great example of how a Russian quarterback impacts the running game. I talk about this stuff a bit, but I think this is a really good example of it, so that's why I wanted to bring it up again. I've circled 94 for Seattle because, you know, it's going to be a running play. In fact, uh, Trey Lance is just going to hand the ball off, but watch what happens. So Lance takes a snap, hands the ball off, and the way that he, you know, could potentially run with the football, you see how that edge rusher who was unblocked, he's the one unblocked guy, which, you know, if, if you weren't having a rushing quarterback, you'd have to make it be a different unblocked guy one further away. But now he's basically having to respect that Trey Lance could keep the ball himself. And because of this, he's been taken out of the play. So as you see, this ends up being a really good running play. And you can get these kind of running plays pretty consistently when you have someone like Trey Lance, who's a threat to run, even if he's not even actually running with the football himself. This is why, you know, Gus Edwards became an insane halfback once he started, you know, once Lamar became the starter and Joe Flacco no longer was. Gus Edwards didn't magically get better. It's in this kind of scheme, having a quarterback who can run helps the running game as a whole.
And now let's talk about something like this. So it's going to be a designed rollout, and you have three receivers who could potentially uh, be the guy that Trey Lance wants to throw to on this play. It's a fourth down, so very important to get these yards right here. And if you have to take a chance, then take a chance, because you've got to get the first down going for it on fourth in your own territory. Watch what happens. So Lance takes the snap, and his first read isn't open. So the way you do this is you basically make your reads closest to furthest away. First read, you want to check it down there, but there's, there's Seattle players. That's dangerous. His second read, the other one I've circled in yellow, wide open. So he wants to make that throw, but of course he's under pressure. So this is difficult. This is a play that Jimmy Garoppolo does not make, quite frankly. He has to check it down probably. Maybe he does. I don't know. But it's a lot more difficult for Garoppolo to make at least. However, watch Lance move, and he is going to make this throw. It's a bit high and a bit hard, I would say, but he makes the throw. Listen, you got it done. Uh, if it's working, it's working. And Samuel has great hands, so you know, no harm, no foul there. Uh, but a really good play. Uh, that's just when I talk about okay, what are you doing that a replacement level quarterback wouldn't do? That's something that a replacement level quarterback does not do. So that's just added value. And on a fourth down, that's a ton of added value. That's basically the same value as a turnover, if you think about it. So great play from Trey Lance. Also something like this I love where, you know, I've gotten on Trey Lance a bit. Uh, one of my nitpicks about him, especially in the preseason was I felt like he needs to get a little bit more touch on the ball. And he does. It's not a big deal. I think people freak out whenever you criticize a young quarterback, even in the smallest of ways. He'll learn it. It's fine. I'm not concerned about it. But one fun thing about it is that on a play like this, it actually kind of bailed him out where it's going to be quarters coverage. You have a receiver running over the middle. Uh, so, you know, there's a gap in coverage. This is the kind of thing that in college basically always gets open. But in the NFL, guys are just a little bit quicker in the secondary. And by that, I mean a lot bit quicker and make a lot better reads and can run over and make plays. Look, Trey Lance uh, takes the snap and you see. So on paper, it looks like it's open right here. But the issue is simply just that, I mean, uh, NFL players are quicker. This is something that we've seen uh, Trevor Lawrence throw interceptions on. This is something we've seen Zach Wilson throw interceptions on. Davis Mills threw inter an interception like this. Uh, you try to sort of fit it through the zone coverage while not realizing that it's just a little bit, the windows are not as big as they appear because you're used to college windows, not NFL windows. However, watch what happens. When Lance makes this throw, it's still knocked away, but it's not intercepted. And I think that that's an interesting thing because he does have that cannon of an arm and that's a definitely a cannon throw right there. It's kind of bailing him out a little bit. Instead of turning the ball over, it's just turning into incompletions, which kind of means that, again, as he gets older, he'll get better and know what windows he can and can't throw to. This is something that rookie quarterbacks just, it takes them time to learn. That it's, it's not an insult whatsoever. But due to his big arm, it, you know, again, when you have a big arm, it can kind of make decisions look better. So a not great decision is only an incompletion instead of a turnover. Whereas if guys who still have big arms, maybe they would have turned the ball over there. Now, there were like a few negatives. I, I didn't see that much. Like, I think his, it's weird because basically his day was probably pretty accurate to what his numbers were, but it just, it was not at all the way that that actually happened. Like, obviously he had that 76 yard touchdown that he didn't really do that much on, but at the same time, he also had some plays, like he had an open, like 30 yard completion that just got deflected at the line. So there was just kind of some, some flukiness on both sides. I think his numbers actually pretty accurately represent his day. Uh, and on this play, this was just kind of one of the weird, not great plays, I would say. Samuel running a quick route over the middle. And watch, as you see, uh, Samuel is open, and Lance waits until he makes his cuts. So it's not like this is a miscommunication or anything. But Lance just completely throws it over his head. Kind of a weird play. I'm not exactly sure what happened there. Maybe he was, I don't know, throwing it away at the last second once he saw another Seattle player was in the area. But that feels like giving him too much credit. I think he just missed the throw, which happens. Uh, you know, and again, it's part of what I talk about is... Okay, sure, maybe he's not perfect, but the, is the good outweighing the bad? And absolutely through, you know, really one week, the good outweighed the bad with Trey Lance. So yeah, that's what I thought. What did you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. What were your thoughts on Lance and his performance? Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.